Hello and welcome to this exclusive interview of Himanshu Shekhar. He is editor of government affairs at NDTV. Thank you so much, sir, for sparing time for us at NewsHound India Foundation. Thank you. Sir, uh, my first question is, how do you think the media industry has changed so dramatically due to COVID-19? I'm asking uh, this because there have been numerous uh, articles written that media industry is not going to be the same again. So how do you think? Well, um, we need to look at two, two, three very broad trends that are becoming visible. Mm -hmm. uh, one, of course, is the fact that this coronavirus pandemic is a, is an unprecedented public health disaster that perhaps world has ever seen. Mm -hmm. And we have seen all institutions respond to the challenges this coronavirus pandemic has posed. We see government struggle to stop its spread. We see media organizations also um, adapting to the threats that it poses to its its crew. For example, reporters working in the field or uh, the idea of work from home, uh, largely very new in media. And we have seen organizations try and adapt to the challenges that coronavirus poses. The third is the economic crisis, which is largely seen as the worst after 1930 uh, Great Depression. Hmm. So while the revenues are declining because the economy is shrinking and we know that the economic activity till 19th April had come to a standstill, uh, there is a minor, minor opening up of the economy, especially in rural areas, in specific industries, in non-coronavirus areas. And we hope that the economy will uh, uh, somehow recover. But the fact is that the RBI governor quoting the IMF projection has said that India's GDP is expected to be 1.9%. Mm -hmm. And so when the economy grows at 1.9%, then every stakeholder in the Indian economy will be badly affected. The government's revenue will come down. The company's profit will come down. We know that large number of small industries are finding it difficult to restart their factories operations. And all this actually also affects uh, how much money these companies can actually spend on advertisement, which is a very important source of revenue for media organizations. So that is why we see media organizations trying to adapt to the challenges that coronavirus poses, uh, both in terms of how disaster journalism needs to be pursued in the time of a public health disaster, how work from home policies can actually work in real life situations, and the challenge of the, the of posed by the economic crisis. So, sir, uh, do you think journalists uh, find it so difficult uh, to cover cases related to coronavirus and things are going to be different post coronavirus uh, situation also in terms of working? For example, they won't be uh, like there will be more a number of increase in work from home. Yeah of over 20 years, we had never come across this kind of challenge. Mm -hmm. And so I think, of course, adaptability is the key. Organizations must learn to adapt fast to the changes that are being affected by coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, it will have ramifications. We are all learning every day. Uh, for example, the challenge of reporting mm -hmm. on coronavirus, of course, as you know, that some journalists mm -hmm. have turned coronavirus positive in Mumbai. Uh, even uh, a, a news channel has also reported uh, many of its staff uh, as coronavirus positive. Mm -hmm. So we do know that these are the hazards of the job that media has to do. Uh, but at the same time, we, I have seen media organizations do their best mm -hmm. to to keep fighting um, and then keep reporting from the ground. And I have seen many of my colleagues, including me myself, I have. Yeah. spend part of my last, let's say, four weeks at home. I have worked from home, I have worked from the field, I have reported from an industrial area, I have done interviews with politicians, mm -hmm. I have met people who are unemployed, I have met workers who are struggling to search for food. Talking in terms of jobs, like there have been many aspiring journalists who graduated this year and they were waiting for good placements from mm -hmm. top J schools in India. But this coronavirus and economic issues, revenue models for different media houses, mm. has it created so much of pressure that they will find it difficult to get job, in your opinion? 
Well, I, I, as I said earlier, when the economy is expected to grow at 1.9 percent, as mm-hmm. the IMF has predicted, mm-hmm. and we saw the RBI governor outline the challenges that the Indian economy is facing, then mm-hmm. it is not only the journalism graduates mm-hmm. uh, who will find it challenging to find a job. Mm-hmm. And that is a challenge that every sector mm-hmm. uh, is facing, and we we do hear about the fact that some media. Some newspapers have even reported that some companies are deferring the date for yeah. joining the new executives. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is a global crisis. Yeah. We see and hear American presidents say that uh, he's toughening the immigration laws, mm-hmm. and he says that he wants to protect jobs for Americans first. Mm-hmm. That's his priority. Mm-hmm. And we know that if economy is falling at the pace at which it has fallen in the last two months, mm-hmm. uh, this is a crisis that I think every student. Every graduate will face uh, from India to US to every part of the world because every country in the world is largely affected. Mm-hmm. Because if there is a global meltdown, then every economy linked with the global economy will be affected. So this is a question which is valid for, let's say, a software engineer or a management graduate. Not only those who have studied in India, but even in US. So and as you know, that everyone. Uh... Like equally, not just. Right, equally. that's right. This is a challenge that everyone has to learn to face. Sir, not uh, only journalism graduates. Yeah, so so many students and aspiring journalists have also started doing their own blogging or some individual reportings, <laughs> or YouTube kind of things or internet reporting, putting out in the public domain. Do you think this is advisable to them? The reason I'm asking this because there will be issue in terms of getting jobs in future. So, do you think it is advisable for them or to wait for the companies to hire them, specifically in terms of journalism students who have graduated this year? Well, a very very important question. You see, the technology has actually changed the landscape mm-hmm. uh, in media space mm-hmm. largely, mm-hmm. and we do see a large large number of my uh, colleagues, my friends, people who have worked with me in my life in the last twenty years. I see them. Very active in this space, mm-hmm. and you know the, the technology, the advancement of technology creates new opportunities, and with these opportunities comes new challenges, mm-hmm. right? So while I have many friends who have opened their YouTube channels and they are doing special programs, uh, they are doing commentaries. They keep sending me the links also. Mm-hmm. Um, they many of them are trying to become entrepreneurs. So in this. A very important question you ask in this period of crisis. Of course, this is one area uh, which, of course, can uh, be a savior for for the journalistic community in the sense that, see, the canvas is much broader now. There are new platforms which are becoming active, mm-hmm. and that is creating space. For example, when I became a television journalist, I could mm-hmm. think of three, four channels where I can work, right? Mm-hmm. And there were. See for national newspapers at that time, 20 years back. Now you see there are hundreds and hundreds of news channels, YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. There are blogs. There are portals. Many of the senior journalists have started their own portals. They have their own websites. They are starting their own journals. And we see that increasingly the world is coming online. Yeah. The, the dot com, for example, yeah. world has broadened. Uh, it's horizon, and we see lots of opportunities um, on the dot com space. Yeah. Uh, so, terms of, yeah. So, so uh, last question is: So, do you think you touched upon being entrepreneur? Do you mm. think, as an expert or who has seen uh, the industry and changing into um, all the changes in the industry in the past mm. 20 years, as a journalist, do mm. you think this is the right time for uh, being a media entrepreneur? Mm. I believe. Uh, See, there is to become an entrepreneur is 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 an ambition. I think that uh, many people have. Uh, there there can be a good time or not so good time to become an entrepreneur. It all becomes uh, drives down to an individual's ambition, uh, what he or she wants to do at a particular time point of time in their life. Mm. And I think you know the the fact that there are. People who are earning more money than what they would have earned conventionally in a media organization okay. by by being active on the YouTube space mm-hmm. or on a uh, starting their own portal, mm-hmm. and they, they they I have I have met people who have told me that they are earning more money now than they used to 
mm-hmm. uh, let's say in a hindi newspaper for example uh, so people are devising new ways they are working hard uh, and you know there is also one very important development yeah. apart from the fact that it is giving opportunities for people uh, in terms of creating livelihood opportunities for them is also the right and the freedom to speak mm-hmm. when shubham starts a youtube channel mm-hmm. then he is the master of that mm-hmm. platform mm-hmm. and he decides the content mm-hmm. but at the same time i think there will be regulatory issues when more and more shubham and himanshu shekhar they start mm-hmm. opening their youtube channels mm-hmm. it raises it will raise regulatory issues in the terms of how much can shubham say or himanshu shekhar say or mm-hmm. any other journalist can say on youtube so sir and what you... kind of content you can say what is your responsibility yeah. what is your accountability these are regulatory issues will also yeah. so sir am i right in understanding that uh, it is right i mean someone if someone is willing a student who is recently graduate a media journal, graduate can start up or can go for something like okay let's try out on youtube or net or blogging kind of thing if you do not get job tradition in traditional media in channels or newspapers because right. of economic uh, situation i uh, see uh, there are two things one is the fact that blog is an expression of the personal identity that a person has mm-hmm. right so for that you don't need an economic crisis to start a blog mm-hmm. blogging is a different kind of activity yeah and i we have seen that people who are very active on the blogging space are people who are very expressive in terms of the fact that they have a strong desire to tell the world that this is what i think about let's say the ordinance that has been approved by cabinet today mm-hmm. that stern action will be taken against those who attack the medical staff mm-hmm. right so i want to have my own opinion so i record a video on my mobile and then i air it uh, on the youtube or share it on my portal so blogging of course is something that should be intricate to uh, your idea of expressing yourself mm-hmm. or your opinions on a given issue right uh, this of course economic crisis is something that is a reality also and all professionals including youngsters those who are in the business those who are seniors they all have to adapt to the challenges that any crisis offers and you see there are people who have been repeatedly saying that every crisis that we face in life also brings with it opportunities mm-hmm. right yeah. so smart people smart professionals are those who can capitalize on the opportunities that a crisis throws for example two things i want to say yeah. uh, for example china yeah now there is a, a thinking in the business circles and i did see a video uh, somewhere uh, in southeast asia uh, a news channel was broadcasting the economic impact of coronavirus yeah and they were saying that a large number of companies have started now it has in fact expedited the the movement of global giants from the chinese manufacturing market mm-hmm. and because of which the chinese professionals have become more and more jobless right uh, large the, the 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 program that i saw had almost all major mm-hmm. american companies and they were uh, moving out closing their office their factories their manufacturing units in china right so a large number of chinese professionals who used to be employed because china was a global manufacturing hub mm-hmm. uh, they are now Uh, out in the open without a security of a job and that capital is moving out and it said that uh, part of the capital has gone to vietnam part of the capital has gone to bangladesh uh, india also as you know has liberalized its fdi norms mm-hmm. uh, to try and lure more and more companies who are looking for a cheaper alternative attractive base mm-hmm. uh, to the indian market as well so that's why every professional also whether you are a journalist or a software engineer or an investment banker uh, or for example travel and tourism industry yeah. see i can tell you shubham i have interviewed people in the travel and tourism space mm-hmm. and i can tell you that the offices have been closed mm. because the last they said in the last month only that so, all the calls are for cancellations yeah sir so, sorry to interrupt you just uh, because of the paucity of time so the last thing is uh, your one or two line message to all the aspiring journalists in today's scenario well uh, two things one you have to be strong mm-hmm. uh, you must have a strong desire mm-hmm. to create new knowledge mm-hmm. 
and creating new knowledge essentially means that you try and read more and more about the world around you, you try and do research more and more about the subjects on which you work mm. and it's only when you do a lot of research that you can create a lot of good knowledge yeah. and that in turn can help you develop yourself as a brand as a credible brand in the media space mm-hmm. so not everything is not that too bad we have to be positive and then move ahead right that's space. right that's thank right thank you so much sir for ta- uh, talking to news sound india foundation yeah thank you shubham thank you